This is episode 227, actually, of TGT Media, and I, and I have a very special guest here today. Um, I, I'm ex super, super excited about this because he is one of the, uh, the great comic people out there that I've seen recently, at least in the last few years. He's just created a brand new comic with uh, called Scam. He's, of course, Joe Mulvey, and uh, how are you doing today, Joe? I'm fantastic. I'm very excited to be on episode 227. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. You know, when I saw uh, Comic Tribe, who was the publisher of this wonderful book, um, Tyler James is a good friend of mine. You know, he said to me, Kurt, you got to check out Scam. You got to check out Joe Mulvey. He's got an amazing uh, talent. He's got a great book on hand. He, look, here, here's the first nine pages. Tell me what you think. I was, I was totally blown away by it. But uh, but for those that have never actually gotten to see Scam or read Scam yet, you know what is it all about? Um, it's pretty much about a crew of uh, super powered con men that uh, are on are on a revenge heist against the guy that screwed them. So uh, I always had the idea of you know if I had superpowers, what would I do? I'm not going to put on tights and fight for the betterment of the world. I'm going to go to Vegas and make some money, <laughs> and uh, that's what, exactly what they decide to do. And uh, then, like every other good story, everything goes to hell, and they have to kind of, you know, scramble together last minute. <laughs> now, um, with this, the, the promotion of, of Scam has been just off the charts. I mean, if I recall correctly, you're, you're, you're in a couple of comic book stores as well. You've been promoted uh, en masse on the Internet. Twitter's been a huge promotion, the Facebook as well. Um, you know, how did you get involved with Comics Tribe and, and, and Tyler James and Company? Um, Tyler James reached out to me uh, about my uh, – I was doing an interview series that was uh, first on my blog, jomoltheart.com, and then we moved that to comicsbulletin.com. And uh, it's been a little sparse because I transcribe it, but what I did was I talked to people who aren't into comics, and then I kind of try to get them into it because people don't really have a, a, a really good understanding of what current comics are. They still think comics are just Superman, the Hulk, Spider-Man, et cetera. So uh, I had done a few of those and um, getting really good responses like from people, and, and Twitter was huge. I'm not on Facebook because I have some people that used to stalk me, so I'm a little terrified <laughs> to be on Facebook. But uh, And then Tyler just reached out to me, and then uh, he had saw on my blog that I was like updating some art progress on Scam, uh, my creator-owned book, and then he said, would you like to bring it to us? And we worked out the details, <clears throat> and I couldn't be happier so far. Awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, the Comics Tribe is, is one of those uh, new small press, small publisher companies that is, is really making a solid name for themselves. And it's not just about publishing the books for them. It's, it's about you know, the content that they have, the, um, you know, the various sections, the 30-day comic ch or, uh, character challenge that they have that is hugely popular. Uh, you know, show, give them your story and, and let them walk you through it. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, from the various... Uh, fe uh, features that they actually have there. Um, it, it's almost like your one-stop comic shop in terms of, you know, how to better yourself in this uh, very cutthroat industry. Dude, it's fant it's, a, it's an unbelievable resource. And I'm honest, I'm not even on the site enough. But I know John Lee, Stephen Forbes, like all people that have, you know, Comic Tribe books coming down the line as well. Uh, it is. It's just such a helpful way for people to look at things. And kind of like, you know, um, like you had said about <clears throat> being able to talk about yourself before we, we went live, you know, you have to be able to like take an honest critique if you want to put something out there. You, you can't expect everyone's going to like it. And <clears throat> what Comics Tribe does uh, at the core of its strength is it helps you to take critiques that generally make your work better, you know? And then you, you'll have a lot of times when you put stuff out on the web that people just go, oh, that's great, or oh, that's this, or oh, that's that. And, uh, Tyler and anyone that knows me artistically, I hate everything I do the second I do it, and I want to, you know, I want to just have a constant, uh, you know, fire in my backyard so I can just start throwing stuff out, and, uh, you know, Tyler, Steven, and a lot of the guys on Comics Tribe, like, I'll put stuff out there. Um, now, because the book gets published, I put it out mainly in emails, you know, obviously, not yeah. not publishing it on the, on the net, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, be as brutal as you want, like, you know, tell me what you want, and they'll send me back critiques. You know, it's great. It's it's this. Don't don't go nuts. You're really going too much. Or I'll get the ones that are like, you know, his legs are uneven. It looks like he's got, you know, a hook for a hand. <laughs> you, you know, did you draw this drunk? 
you know, like <laughs> something like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I love the site. I love the guys that, that, that are working there and, and ladies, I don't mean to be sexist. And, uh, you know, it is I, like to anyone that's listening, I can't say enough. The, the genuine help you get from comics tribe. No, definitely. And, um, you know, but this is about you. This is about scam about yourself because, um, and, and pardon the expression, uh, before this comic book, uh, and, and everything like that, I had no idea who you were. So, right. so this is, that's why. Shame on you. Let's just say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I just. Tag on your face. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's why I, you kept pointing to my cheek there. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> But no, t talk about yourselves here, because you, your style, you, you have very tight style in terms of your, your black and whites there, but, but how did you get started, though? Um, I, you know, I, pretty much like anyone, the start was being a fan as a kid. Uh, I grew up during that 90s boom of Youngblood, you know, Jim Lee and the X-Men, like that, you know, and, and, and uh, just kind of emulating it, you know? So I'd put down a comic, and then I'd just pick up, you know, a sheet of paper or whatever, and I'd just kind of try to draw like them. And... I'm going to have a, a post coming up on my blog uh, in the uh, hopefully not too distant future of, uh, you know, some of my first drawings. And they were, you know, kick you in the nuts, horrendous when you look back on them. And, uh, you know, I just kind of kept with it. And then in high school, I had some nice art teachers that kind of saw what I was doing. Definitely didn't have that in college. Uh, I think I did my senior thesis. I was a major in um, theater tech and, uh, and studio art. So I was destined to be homeless or the best waiter the world has ever seen. <laughs> and uh, from that, like, I, I kind of got a lot of, um, which I didn't like at the time, I got a lot of uh, pressure to have other influences. So, like, in, you take art classes and they tell you, you know, I'm like, ah, I want to draw, like, you know, Jim Lee. And they're like, yeah, when we don't know Jim Lee. You have to look at, like, Michelangelo, Raphael. Like, you know, they tell you this other stuff. And then, thankfully, I, you know, some of it seeped in. But uh, then I got out of college and then I started... Uh, being extras in uh, TV and movies because I had that blend in face. <laughs> and uh, after a little while, I just started getting jobs doing graphic design and I stuck with that. And then through that, I met uh, another little company that was into comics. And then I kind of have always been on the fringe of comics doing stuff. And then um, like Tyler really helped me, uh, Tyler James from Comics Tribe really helped me shape the idea of, of, scam together that I had for since I was probably like 18 and um, you know get it all together make it the package and now make it the, the series that it is so then with all of this stuff here you, you know you have this idea rattling around in the back of your mind for for X number of years um, and obviously you you weren't the best waiter in the world or else you'd still be doing that uh, I peed in people's food. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> if anyone, you know, hears my voice and they recognize me, I probably did something to you, Sue. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> well, okay, legal aspects aside from this now uh, infamous interview. <laughs> 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 I knew it. It was that guy. Uh, well, what about yourself here? When it comes down to it, though, it, you, you, like you said, you took a lot of criticism. You, you, you had to go through a lot of crap in general to get to where you are now. Um, what was it about, but sticking with your passion that, that kept you going after all these years? Uh, I like to, to stick to it and not give up. And, you know, like my, uh, my father raised me and he was, you know, absolutely completely okay with the idea of me drawing comics and you know he used to have me <clears throat> draw on a napkin and be like sign that and you know I'll sell it later down the line and he was actually the one who helped me come up with the idea for scam because uh, when I was uh, 18 my, like and I ha actually have it in the first issue of the story my father asked me you know do you have a good fake ID and I was like no I don't have that and then he's like well let me see your ID <laughs> So I had a fake one, and he goes, no, you got to get a better one. <laughs> he goes, come on. I live in New York City, so you can get a better one. So I got a better one, and we went to, you know, we went to Vegas. So, uh, and it fooled casinos because my comp cards now are all you know, dating me at like 38, 39 years old, and I'm, and I'm not 38 or 39. Uh, again, for legal disclosure, I won't say what age I am. Uh, but so 
you know, like growing up, I, I had the option to go into the electrical union, do this, do that. And like, you know, my father was always like, that's not what you want to do. You want to do art. So he's like, don't, you know, like that old adage of what is it? Like, you know, if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. And um, that's why I pretty much stuck with it. And then I'll be honest with you, comics is something now I'm, I'm more pushing myself into again. Be- because uh, beyond that, I paid the bills with, you know, graphic art jobs, yeah. you know. Which uh, in New York City, you know, is is I'm lucky that it's doable. Yeah, yeah, definitely, especially with uh, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong. New York is a, is a very uh, a very artistic town, but it's a very cutthroat town. It feels like if you had New York next to to L.A., there would be like a constant war of of just artists. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, it, it is a very but it. it it's artistic, but in the same sense, it's all over the place. You know what I mean? Like this, it, there's just people who are like, you know, I could be a graphic designer or I could, you know, live in a hut and make bowls because that's what my, you know, that's what my soul wants or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's competitive, man. You know, I don't think I get jobs. Well, now maybe I, I get jobs a little easier because I've been doing it for probably like seven plus years, eight plus years. But, you know, in the beginning, you have to pretty much audition for every single job you're getting. And then, you know, in the beginning, you have to undercut your price to get a job, to take it away from someone else, because, you know, you're freelance. And, you know, you have to be able to, to, for lack of a better term, whore yourself. You've got to push yourself. You've got to tell every single person every single time why you're the best option for them, why you can do something and no one else can. And, you know, and pretty much if you have to, you have to con your way into a job. You know, so, yeah, it, I, I'm thankful that L.A. and uh, New York are not next to each other, though. <laughs> Because I trust me, there's a, a ton of people that are better than me. <laughs> well, even though you are the best for this interview as well, too, so you know, don't don't sell yourself short on that. But uh, no, no, I'm on two two seven, and two two seven is going to be epic. <laughs> well, I've heard that before, but no, <laughs> this has been actually pretty entertaining so far. I, the major thing, though, is 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 scam scam to me, and and I know I, I've I've heard the elevator pitch before, and I believe it's. Um, it's basically the uh, Ocean's Eleven, the the old Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr. one, not this new George Clooney one, even though that was fun to uh, meet superheroes. And I think that's a great way to, to draw interest because everyone has heard of Ocean's Eleven, be it the old one or the new one. And right. They either, they either liked it or they really didn't. Right. Um, but but adding that superhero aspect to it just just adds that little little flair, like a little extra drama that that you don't really see. Because as smart as and as clever as Ocean's Eleven was when they first created it, um, you just add that extra twist as well. Now, could you see this as an actual movie, even if they took out the Ocean's Eleven aspect, or at least you know? Yeah, I mean, I can honestly like I I can see anything as a movie. I, you know, I mean, like. Uh, the amount of things that come out now that are, for lack of a better term, complete and utter shit that go into movie theaters, uh, you know, my, scam's no different than anything else. It could, it could, it could fit any format. But I will say, you know, um, just because people think that you, you get into comics because you want to sell things as an idea, you know, I will gladly take whatever money they give me if they, if that's an option that comes down the line. But my my intention is just to make a kick ass comic and to make it something that you know because we're indie and we're a smaller a publisher. A lot of people might not, you know, hear about us or whatever. But when this is over, this is going to be something that I'm. I can. I will be 100% proud of to have my name on. And I think it's going to be. I think it's pretty innovative uh, for the fact that, like, I play with tropes of the whole superhero genre. To me, superheroes like Superman has got to be a bigger type guy. Because your body's going to break down from doing all this stuff. Whereas, you know, for people who haven't read it, um, we hint at it a little bit in the first and the first issue. As the issues go on, we're going we're gonna to delve more into it. But these powers have a drawback. So, you know, yeah, someone can do something amazing. Some, like uh, we have a character called Hack who can um, – he pretty much sees through things. He has like x-ray vision. And he can use his power, but it, it drains him. It takes, it takes his toll because he's got a human body with these abilities. So, you know, then you kind of have this drama that gets built up of, you know, yeah, I can touch something and turn it invisible, but every time I do, I, you know, the bigger the object, I throw up for 10, 15, 20 minutes. So, you know, and that's, that's pretty hard when you're trying to rob a bank. You can't leave that DNA all over the bank floor. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, my hope is to, to deliver something in a comic that is innovative and people haven't seen before. That's, and no, if that's, it, that's, yeah, if it goes to a movie, then I'm, you know, that's it. Uh, you know, obviously I would have to play all the characters <laughs> and, uh, I would have to definitely go, you know, Eddie Murphy on one of the three. <laughs> do, you, do you have the legs for a skirt? <laughs> I have what I've been told as childbearing hips. So, uh, you know, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Kilts it is. All right, then. Uh, well, that's actually interesting because you're right. You know, that, that is something that we don't actually think about. You know, we, we see a Spider-Man, a Batman, uh, a Superman, uh, you know, Thor, et cetera. Uh, we, we see these types of characters we've grown up on. And you're right. We forget the if they were human, what would happen aspect, and and that's that's interesting. I think that that'll add a definite nice twist to to your comics, especially since, like you said, they're going through the these this harebrained scheme. They're they're trying to rob a, a bank of money, uh, not a, just any bank, a casino bank at that, and and it's 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 just going to be incredible. And now, how many books do you have scheduled for this? Um, we, we're, it's a five issue series. Okay. So we'll, uh, you know, and then, you know, I, I kind of want to follow like the lock and key type, um, you know, publishing system where you have like, you know, sets of minis. Oh. Because to me, that just works better. To me, I can plan better to that. I mean, it takes me about a month and a half to draw an issue um, because, again, it's not my full time job right now. This is just, a, you know, a passion job. Right. And um, uh, you got to, you know, you got to make everything clear, especially in a con man story. You got to make it clear because you don't want people to be like, well, how did this happen and how did we get here and how did we get there? People have to follow along. So then when the big turn comes at the end, they, they, they get it and they're in it, on it with you. Um, but yeah, as of right now, five issues and then uh, hopefully that gets received well enough that we can, you know, have the interest in another series after that. But before Scam, though, when, when you're creating... Uh, when you're when you're writing out your ideas and all that stuff, what else have you done comic wise for each, even if it's just for yourself? Um, well, no, I've done like uh, pinups for companies, uh, trading card sets. Uh, you know, you work on tons and tons of pitches from other people, <clears throat> and uh, I have like a a ton of ideas. Like I think I'm constantly writing on Twitter. I wish there was more than one of me because I would get so much more done. Uh, but yeah, I mean. Like right now, I have three other people that are, um, you know, interested in doing the series. Uh, you know, another company has reached out with interest to, to, you know, to do something. But right now, my focus is Scam and Comics Tribe. Uh, I am. I'm, uh, have you read the Red Ten? Which is another. Uh, I, I've I've heard of it. I haven't actually read it yet. Okay. Well, I will tell you a little exclusive right now. There's a character in the Red Ten called the Oxymoron. And uh, let me give you the quick pitch of the Red Ten. It's by Tyler James, and it's pretty much um, a, a takeoff on Agatha Christie's, and then there were none. Mm. So you have uh, pretty much what equates to like a, a Justice League type team that are on an island, and every issue one of them dies, and there's ten issues. And you can find all this information on uh, ComicsTribe.com, and it's fantastic. In this um, story, there's a character that's called the Oxymoron. And he is pretty much like a Joker analog. Like he lo he's a, he looks like the Joker a, a touch, uh, or he has he and he's a psychopathic murderer. <laughs> so Comic Tribe has a uh, anthology book coming out with all of his uh, all other stories by other uh, writers and stuff like that. So uh, I know there's a press release coming this week, so I'll I'll, I'll let that uh, do all the um, I guess the the full on press for uh, telling you who the creative teams are. But that is something that I'm working on, and that's uh, with a very, very. I'm writing. I'm working with a very, very good writer. Uh, I'm just drawing. None of my stupidity will hit the page outside of the of drawing, and uh, it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be something to really, really look forward to. Like, especially just in comics, let alone indie comics, in uh, later in the year. So that nice. that's the other thing I'm working on right now. Nice, nice. I'm looking forward to that. I think uh, when when Tyler was on uh, way back when, he might have hinted at it. I never actually followed up with it but i'm glad you you did because this is going to be interesting and I'll, I'll be happy to put the the presser up on tgt there but um but let's talk about yourself here you know while we we're in the green room before we actually started recording uh you know being from from new york and all that stuff you obviously have a sports passion of some some kind uh 
have you ever taken your your art and and all that stuff and and done maybe a caricature of, of your favorite heroes? Oh, dude, I have tons and tons, tons and tons of stuff. Uh, I'm a Jet Ranger Yankee fan. Uh, the Knicks, I, I really, I just, I don't like basketball. I know that sounds sacrilegious to some people, but <laughs> hockey's my favorite sport. And then to go from hockey to watching people bounce a ball in shorts and get penalties for, you know, bumping, I, I can't. I just can't, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I've drawn, like, you know, uh, I've drawn pictures of, like, Henrik Lundqvist. I've drawn pictures of, uh, you know, uh, I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to say Derek Jeter, but that's a lot of people commission me. Like, I have a, a good list of people who like uh, my work enough to commission me. And uh, Derek Jeter, for a while, a couple years back, I think I must have done, like, I I'd, honestly, I had to look up my records. No joke. It's got to be at least 40 or 50 of them in a year. <laughs> um. Which, you know, my, my, my girlfriend at the time and now my wife is like, why do you have so many pictures of Derek Jeter all over your work desk? And I'm like, reference. It's reference. I swear to God. It's, it's not a man crush, really. No, it's not. It's not. But he's pretty. But no, it's not. <laughs> uh, and then on the Jets, uh, my favorite player currently, I guess, is Daryl Revis. But I haven't really drawn much uh, any of the Jets. And I will not be drawing Tim Tebow. Oh, so come that, on. Come on. The official... Listen, if they use him, okay, Kurt, if they use him effectively and stop this whole nonsense of, of the quarterback scandal between him and Sanchez, <laughs> I really think he's a good player that can really, really benefit a team. But you don't have a press conference or a backup quarterback. Mark Brunel's sitting there doing his crossword like, I never got that. Like, <laughs> you know, it's a, it, it, let me tell you something. It's a fiasco, though. It is a fiasco in New York. Oh, yeah, yeah it, they're already sold out with the jerseys. <laughs> It's not, I wish it was a joke. Yesterday, like they were, people from Models in my neighborhood were trying to go on eBay to buy <laughs> to buy Tebow jet jerseys. I'm like, that's disgusting. Look, if they use them effectively in the fourth quarter, they'll be great. They'll have a, a 12 and 0 season. Before this even went down, I was at the Rangers game against the Devils on Monday night, <laughs> and I was talking to a guy who sits next to us. Okay, and I will take a picture and send it to you. The, the man that sits next to us, I have uh, four buddies. We go to the games. The, the man that sits next to us with his son, his son is 21, 24 years old, and he looks exactly like Tim Tebow. <laughs> we call him Tebow. Every time he comes to the seat, we make a huge to-do. And now that he's playing in New York, forget about it. It's going to be insane. <laughs> so we, we, and we, just, we talk to this guy as if he's Tim Tebow. So we go, you know, where are you going? Obviously, getting Peyton, you know, you're going somewhere. And uh, I, my, fear was, my fear was he went to New England. Like, uh, that was my, my gigantic fear. Because Belichick could, could make anyone into a star, and he would use him like a Wes Welker, only who could throw, yeah. which is frightening as a Jets fan. <laughs> and uh, then all of a sudden, he comes to the Jets. So, you know. So, here's my promise to you. I will not be drawing Tim Tebow. <laughs> I will not be Tebowing. <laughs> Even though my Christmas card this year was me and my wife Tebowing with our, our new kid. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's it. We'll, uh, we'll, I, and if anyone has requests for Tebow, let me give you a verbal response now. Uh, no. <laughs> but thank you for the interest. <laughs> you just killed half your, uh, half your commission sales for this next few years, man. <laughs> yeah. Better than myself if I had to keep drawing to Tebow. Well, what's going to be even worse is, you know, now that Tebow's left the Broncos, uh, and now that they have Manning, Manning's going to have to do something crazy as well, or else it's just not going to fit the whole gimmick of the Broncos. Yeah, listen to me. Everyone was going nuts. You got to get Peyton Manning. You got to get Peyton Manning. And you absolutely did have to go after him. But the thing he's going to do that's going to be crazy is the one hit that finally snaps that neck. Yep. And it's over. You know, how much of that $95 million is guaranteed? Something like 37 38 First two years, probably. Yeah, uh, that's insane. Like, that's why, you know, as a Jet fan, I'm like, get, I'll stay with Mark Sanchez right now. Don't, because, first of all, last year, oh, excuse me, first of all, last year, the Jets' offensive line was horrendous. And, you know, if Sanchez plays, it's over. So my think my move I think the move he's gonna do is the um, the Christopher Reeve at a certain point because <laughs> that man's just not gonna get up. Oh, well. Hey, as long as they don't have the whole headhunting, uh, you know, defensive aspect like they did with the uh, you know Saints there, but it's all good. 
What else, what fan are you? Like, uh, what's your uh, what's your teams? Uh, unfortunately, I'm a I'm a Lions fan. Um, we've suffered enough as it is. So I so yeah. I feel for you as a Jets fan. So I understand. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but mainly it's it's Tigers, uh, Tigers, Wings, and Jets for uh, Tigers, Wings, and Lions for me. Pistons, they just they're they're not they're not good. They've got the letter. They've got the name Piss in their name. It can't be you know. It can't be good. But I'll tell you right now, I mean, you got the Red Wings. That's a class hockey team. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, although your your Rangers took us apart handily in uh, in that overtime a few, few games ago, but you know it, it's a love of the game. You got you got to enjoy what you what you got around you. And people think, well, I'm Canadian, so I I have to root for the Canadian teams. I know. <laughs> I'll go with the winner every time. Yeah, it gets hard. It gets hard. And I, I just like in sports, you know, like a lot of people, a lot of my friends anyway, are uh, huge sports fans. And that's a good way to like bring them into comics because I think people are just as rabid about comics as, you know, the fans are. I mean, as the fans of sports. Mm-hmm. You know, what you're changing the Fantastic Four's uniform, you know, and, you know, and 20,000 blog posts go up in, in two seconds because people, you know, work themselves into a fury. And it's the same thing with Tebow. You know what I mean? Like, you got Tebow, people went nuts. I will literally say, when I got texts about him coming to the Jets, every one of my friends, I got like 40 texts coming in saying, what, the TF question mark, exclamation point, Tebow, really? And, uh, you know, th- there's definitely a crossover there. And I always try to get my friends that are into sports into, into comics to some extent. So there's a very good overlap. You know, something you might want to try and do here, and I'm not sure if you've done this before or not, but what if, what if you took your characters from Scam and put them in uh, in jerseys of your favorite teams? Well, I will say this. If we are lucky enough to go to a second series, um, there's going to be an involvement in sports. Because whereas these guys use their powers to, um, you know, pretty much be criminals and steal... Other people have powers, and maybe they go and play baseball. Maybe they go and play hockey. Maybe they're, you know, maybe they're like the Wayne Gretzky type st- guy. You know, let's be honest. If anyone knows anything about hockey, Wayne Gretzky scored over a hundred goals in a season, and that is insane. Insane. The most talented guys now are lucky to put up fifty. So what I'm saying is, yeah, Wayne Gretzky was some sort of super powered man. No, he's just Canadian. It's, it's, it's true. Hard. You guys glide on that. <laughs> It's like you guys. It's like you guys are literally born. Your mom's ass is born on ice. Like you just can't help yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have to deal with the polar bear mafia, the penguin triad, and the caribou cartel all <laughs> all the time here. So you know, <laughs> hockey's the only other thing Montreal. we can deal with. <laughs> I, I I absolutely love Canada. Love. Mm. I went to Montreal for New Year's uh, with my chick a few years back, and I was you know had my Ranger stuff on. And got such a very warm welcome from every place we went to because people were like original six, we respect original six, and uh, the, just the beer, the hockey, and the greatest thing in the history of the culinary arts, poutine. I mean, just fa- as an as a as a New York Irishman who likes beer and potatoes, you can't get better than than poutine. And may I say to anyone listening, poutine. Comics Tribe and Scam goes together like it's Thanksgiving in your mouth. It's just amazing. <laughs> and just have that nice good old Canadian lager there on Ooh, the side. I and, saw uh, <laughs> oh, we have some actually pretty nice, um, some nice home brews uh, around here now. So it's it's amazing. Uh, but anyhow, in regards to the comics though, here you've you've been in the industry a while you you've you've seen and done a lot of things uh, when it comes to graphic design and all of that stuff but you know what personal challenges have you had to go through to get to where you are um well obviously just to get better writing is the biggest challenge for me um just because i think there's a fine line between saying something and having it make sense and then writing it down in comics. I, I, after that first issue of Scam, I learned, you know, if you saw the first draft, it was, you know, it was yellow pages thick. It was phone book thick. And, uh, you know, Tyler and Stephen Forbes uh, from Comics Tribe, they, they kind of said, you know, be less wordy. Like, st- you know, this isn't you talking where you can ramble on and people will still <clears throat> pay attention. If you give a person a, a huge word balloon, 
sometimes that's going to, you know, throw them off if they're not interested at that point. So try to be shorter. So my biggest challenge now is just making the writing as exciting as I can, making the art as exciting as I can. And comics are hard, hard work. But I, I wouldn't want it any other way, but they are hard, hard work, especially as an indie guy, to wrangle the entire, uh, you know, team on a process. Because it's like you have to be very much your own businessman. You have to set up schedules, deadlines, um, you know, and it's all about getting it out, working with retailers. It, I, I, it, to answer your question, I think the biggest challenge is learning how to make, distribute, and sell comics. Learning the business of it because you're not just the, you're not just the talents of an artist or a writer. You know, in, in the indie scene, you're the promoter and the you know the disciplinarian that's got to be at the head of everything. So um, just trying to be, I think, a better businessman and learn as much as I can is right now the biggest challenge for me. The business side is something that is not always talked about, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, a creator owned product like that. We usually see, you know, OK, well, I'm, I'm the artist and writer of this comic book and uh, someone else can deal with the business stuff. It, it appears to be not the case obviously in this one yeah no i mean and that's i think that's to the benefit of comics tribe that you know everyone that's involved in comics tribe is 120 percent invested in pushing this in making sure people know in cold calling retailers and telling them you have to get this into your store you know there's nothing better than when you know and, and with social media you really can get a lot more eyes on your product than than you ever could before and um, I, I get such enthusiasm and I get refueled from those emails that come in that say, hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm a store in Ohio. Never heard of you, but I've had like two or three people come in and, you know, they've asked me for scam. How can I get it in my store? And, dude, the juice that gives me, it, it fuels me. It's, it's amazing because it's like, wow. That, it's not only awesome that people just, you know, saw it somewhere online – but that people saw it and they went out and they actively are, are doing something to try to get that book in their hands. And, you know, and I think there's a lot of people out there that would definitely be reading comics, tried books and scam and scam is intended to bring in a different kind of, you know, audience. Like I want to get people who don't read comics, you know, because give them scam and then, um, you know, give them criminal, give them, you know, there's so many other books that people can get introduced to that, you know, I guarantee you is better than that everyone loves Raymond repeat you watch before you go to bed, you know, check out, you know, scalped, check out, you know, whatever we, I mean, I'm very lucky. We work with a great um, bunch of retailers across the country and uh, we have a guy in um, Lowell, Massachusetts uh, who, are you familiar with what Necra is? Uh, it's not ringing a bell right now. It's the Northeast comic retailers Alliance. And, uh, his name is uh, – I mean there's a lot of great ones that are in Necra, but uh, this guy's name is Larry. He's at Larry's Comics on Twitter, and what he does is he has like entire sections in his store that say, okay, if you like this book, try this. Like they're on placards next to the, the, the comics, which is great because it's like, you know what? Personally, I have no investment in reading the Superman story. I don't. But I did read uh, the Grant Morrison, Frank Wiley Superman, and that – to me, the, the all-star Superman, and that was amazing. So, you know, if someone can say to me, okay, you might not like Superman, you like Superman, then go read this, you know? And I think that's just, I think that's just a great way of getting other people to understand what comics are, you know? And for me to be able to pitch someone, hey, would you go see a movie that's Ocean's Eleven with superpowers or something like that? When you say movie, people are like, absolutely. I'm like, okay, well, here's the movie, but it's in a comic. You know, because people don't people don't realize they you know, hundred million people will go see Thor and or the Avengers, but you know, eighteen will pick up another book just to try it out. There's not enough crossover to kind of build the whole entertainment medium, and uh, I definitely hope that happens with Scam, and I hope I can put it in as many people's hands as possible. But uh, if if it ever gets to the point where, you know, it's it's selling millions and millions and millions of copies. And we get the industry back to those numbers. Uh, I will come back on here and I will say it's all because of you. And episode two two seven. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Is this your first interview though about this? Uh, no, no. I've I've done a few other interviews with uh, the We Talk Pod, uh, We Talk Comics podcast, mm -hmm. 
and um, a few other ones that I'm blanking on right now that I don't mean to be rude about. I just uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not remembering the name. And I was very lucky. I did an interview on uh, for Graphically that got ran on iFanboy that was very helpful and uh, bleedingcool dot com. And uh, I, I can't say enough about just getting the word out there and just being so appreciative for people who kind of dug it that first issue to kind of help it, you know, along. And I can't wait, like, for people to read the second issue because uh, we're, we're, we're shooting right now for the end of April. We're going to be hopefully sending out the uh, previews to our retailers next week. And there is a reveal of a superpower that I will tell you when we get off the, uh, the, the air. <laughs> but right. it is a reveal that I think is, is going to be a lot of fun and people are really, really going to like it. And we are going to market the shit out of it, if I may say. We're going to try to push this hard. <laughs> nice, nice. I'm looking forward to that, truly. Um, you know, TGT has always been about the creative people that come on the show, no matter if they're in the comic, film, music, and game publishing industry. Is there anyone that you know and respect uh, enough to to have them come on the show? Have them come on the show with you? I would suggest everybody. You're a very good interviewer. You keep it going. Trust me, we did the We Talk Comics podcast, and I think we ended up going like two and a half hours because we just started rambling about beer and I think politics, and it, it just got it, – it derailed quickly. It was a great time. But, uh, no, you're, you're an awesome interviewer. I mean, there's so many people like that I would just uh, – like there's so many people I want to hear their insights you know, I want to, I listen, I'm a, I'm a process hog. I want to hear what's going on, you know, with people in there and their creative, you know, just process their ideas, how they do things. I find myself, I got to mentally, when I'm writing, I have to like, I can't sit down. I have to go do something mundane. Like I have to clean the yard or I have to go take a drive or I have to go to the gym. I have to do something that's not concentrating on, on writing because it drives me mad. Like, you know, then I start punching balls and I'm like, that sounds stupid. Why am I so stupid? And, uh, I, I, you know, and then I hear other people like that just like, nope, I sit down at my, my keyboard at nine o'clock and I stop around three and I, all this stuff. And I'm like, that's amazing to me. But who I would have on, hmm. you know, who I think is really, really interesting. Greg Pak, the writer for uh, Marvel. Oh, okay. He's really, really an interesting guy. Um, I like, I'd like to hear, uh, you know. Have you have you um, read the standard at all from Comic Strive? No, that's the one I haven't actually gotten to. Okay, that uh, John Lee's mm -hmm. is someone you would like to speak with. Uh, he's he's a crazy Scotsman. He's uh, he's what happened. I think he came from Grant Morrison's head. From what I heard, Grant Morrison, the back of his head has a vagina, and it gave birth to John Lee's. And John Lee's lives in Scotland. And a, a funny story about this guy. John Lees stood up at a con years ago and asked Grant Morrison a question. And Grant Morrison said, I'm sorry, I don't understand you with your accent. <laughs> so I can't understand it. That's how thick this guy is acting on this guy. Is. But, uh, yeah, he's someone you would like to hear because he is, he is a unique, a unique uh, person, an individual. And you uh, obviously you interviewed Tyler, uh, Tyler James from Comics Tribe. He is a uh, comics guru. In the making. If I was any editor in chief of comics, I would be looking over my shoulder. Because that man runs a tight ship. He knows what he's Good. doing. Uh, yeah. Are there any like dream guests that you like want to have? You want to try to grab? You know, for for me, I I don't know. I, I'd love to get for me personally. I would love to get uh, 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 Gabe and um, uh, the Penny Arcade guys, as oh, okay. as, well, as well as Robert Koo, uh, the business. Uh, uh, guru of Penny Arcade. I'd love to get him on the show. Uh, uh, I've already done pretty much three quarters of the Half Pixel crew. I just have to get Dave Collette on the show. Um, those were my inspirations in terms of when I started reading comics. Right. I, I, I wasn't much of a I wasn't much of a DC or Marvel guy until you know talking with people like yourself and 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 people I've got into an interview like uh, you know I Jill Thompson uh, on a video interview she was amazing uh, Ramon Perez is just uh, incredible Ramon Talking Perez to, is insane he yeah is. he's lights lights out extremely talented got to interview him before um before any of the bigger studios uh, got to him at the Archia booth last year 
Okay. Uh, I, f I felt honored at that. So <laughs> when he did uh, Jim uh, Jim Henson's Tale of Sand. How great is that book? Oh, I, I yeah. just, I can't wait to get mine signed. I mean, I, I want to get, and you know, he's amazing. I, I've, I've spoken to over 500 people in terms of interviews, <laughs> be it video or audio. So I've talked to a lot of wonderful, talented, creative people. I, I just like to keep getting, um, to keep, uh, Whoever wants to come on is, is usually how I how I work it. And um, would I like to interview a Stanley one day? Sure, I would love it. Give me five minutes with Stanley. That would be that would be amazing in a heartbeat. Um, yeah, you, know, you know these these people that have been in the industry as long as they have. Uh, I want to showcase their stories and their talent, and that's why I do this. That's why I've been doing this for as long as I have, and that's why I'm going to university for visual arts, communication, media, and film. I want to better myself than what I have here. Even though this is good, I know I can tighten my own my own process and my own abilities to to help creative people. So Yeah, did you never I mean, you know, I don't think you can ever be happy with where you're at. You always gotta try to strive to be better. You know what I mean? But in a in a little little bit of promotion for uh RK and their Tale of Sand book, uh Tale of Sand by Ramon Perez, unbelievable. Well, you know, uh, Ramon Perez, and I believe it was a Jim Henson script, right? Yeah. His, his last manuscript, yeah. And the book's amazing. Uh, the lettering in the book is even unbelievable. The letterer, Deron Bennett, um, he actually had to take and make a font of Jim Henson's, off of Jim Henson's lettering. Oh, wow. Like, that's how in-depth they went. And if you think, like, if you really look at the book, to anyone listening to this, if you like the art and just the the medium of comics, Tale of Sand is one of the best books to come along ever. You know what I mean? Like I can't say enough good things about it. But the the good thing is the letterer on that book is also the letterer on Scam. That's the kind of cross promotion we have. We 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 try to you know I try to get quality. I try to get Jim Henson to return my calls about maybe writing. <laughs> something for scam he has not returned my call i don't know why obviously he's too big time for me um i think play he's with a little, puppets, but he can't call uh, me back i think he's a little buried in his work there uh. he might be he might be that's the line of the day right there right next to that um but yeah like like to, to have people go on an interview series and be competently interviewed is something that everyone should do and I think would do because like especially for me I, I want to beat the drum on scam co everything for comics tribe every, you know like I want to talk to anyone that would listen about why you want to read my book and you know when you get interviewed people ask you the same four five questions and then that's it and uh, your show that I you know I've been listening to it for, for a while now uh, always interesting I always learn something about someone that I had no idea of you know I mean with social networking and Twitter I could tell what someone had for lunch but I might not really be able to tell you know what it is that drives them when they're creating and that's the kind of stuff I want to listen to well then let's talk about your process because obviously you know you listen to other people's processes and you really you know, really delve into that aspect but let's turn the table on you here because you know, you said it takes you about a month, month and a half because of your other jobs to do a, an issue of scam. Right. But are you are you still a digital or a guy or are you traditional? How do you I'm traditional, but I'm starting to wet my feet in in digital. I mean, like, you know, for for graphic design, I'm doing everything on a computer, you know, for the most part. But uh when it came to the way I learned how to make comics, it was, you know, do your layouts, blow it up, put it on, you know, Bristol board and stuff like that. And I don't ink uh, I have digital inks applied after when I'm done, but uh, I am completely um, old school. Plus, there's a resale value to the original artwork. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree with that for sure, definitely. But, but why have you held off on the digital aspect? Honestly, I think I will try more digital as soon as I'm done with this series of scam, because I, I feel like there's going to be a curve that I need to to you know give myself time for and I don't want to do it right in the middle of production on the on the series. No, definitely I understand that. Um if I can recommend some software possibly uh your way for this. Absolutely. Um looking at your style I think you you would personally benefit from from Smith Micro's Manga Studio EX. Okay. Uh don't let the name fool you. Uh for your black and white style as you're doing it I think it would be very beneficial for you. 
Uh, don't worry about the Katu. It's PD, the co-host. Um, <laughs> but uh, screaming kid. I, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Anyhow, if I uh, <laughs> if I took this upstairs and you heard my daughter, she makes the same noises, and she's four months. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, so, so trust me. So she's going after some bird seed as well, then. <laughs> she, we just we just started her on bird seed. She's just really uh, yeah. Well, congratulations. Thanks. That's that's Very a big proud. step there. <laughs> Pretty soon she'll be asking for the car. But <laughs> my God, no! My God, no! Especially having a girl. Oh my God. <laughs> But <laughs> I've got I've got ways to chain her to the house. Uh, you know, I have all different like sizes for all different ages. Like, oh, those are her five year old chains. Oh, those are ten year old. Uh, but then you're back day, to the... go ahead, Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to no, go. No, 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 no. Go I was ahead. Just, the other say, day. Talk, just talking about that. I said this story last night that I said I was just driving by the post office the other day and I live by a high school and I just see like, you know, two kids kissing or whatever, like, a, you know, a girl and a guy. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's going to be my daughter one day. And I'm looking at this guy, and I'm like, I want to punch you right in the face. <laughs> like, I, just, I don't even know you, but you're kissing someone else's daughter, and I want to punch you right in the face. And then I'm like, I, I married a woman. My, you know, uh, like what my, my in-laws must be like, my father-in-law must be like, I want to punch him in the face every single time I see him. There's just this natural, you know, predetermination from the second you meet a man that's with your daughter, and you're like, I want to kill you. <laughs> It has nothing to do with anything. It's prompted by it. Oh, and I don't edit this stuff out either. So there you go. <laughs> Parenting 101 for what so, you So yeah, here's what you've learned. One, I will not draw Tim Tebow. Two, if at any point in the future you look at my daughter or are interested in her when she grows up, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> So you must have a uh, uh, jaw of granite there then uh, to survive said punching of face. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I've been punched plenty of times, trust me. <laughs> but back to the digital aspect here of your software uh, that you should probably look at. But yeah, for your style, I would really look at Manga Studio EX4 uh, or 5 whenever that comes out. Um, very clean lines, very, uh, you know, you can draw your frames. You don't have to worry about doing extra layers for anything even though you can do layers for it it's like a merger of photoshop meets um you know meets the easiest ability to draw a comic page by page book by book it's it's incredible that's awesome yeah um and uh then it comes down to are you going to go with a cintiq or are you going to go with uh like an intuos or whatever i'd probably go cintiq because that's the thing i've been looking at the most but i've been hearing a lot about what like apple has in the in the works so I mean I'm I'm an Apple junkie. I got the iPhone. I got MacBook Pros. Uh, you know, I got a Mac Air upstairs. I got I mean literally I might as well just get a tattoo of Mac symbol on my head because I everything I have is Mac. Uh, and I've been hearing things about you know their their answer to the Cintiq, and uh, it's very it sounds amazing, but in the same respect, um, uh, Cintiq just has the better history. Yeah. So I think you know to start out I would definitely you know go with Cintiq. Definitely, yeah. A lot of a lot of really great artists, especially if you if you ever watch Larder Sosa's uh, Larder Step work on UStream, he's on, he's on a PC, but he, all of his stuff is drawn with a Cintiq, and he does Manga Studio. He also does uh, Illustrator and Photoshop as well. But but just just watching his his style of, of stuff and how he how he works with it, you know, he's very very vocal about the, the digital aspect as well as traditional too. So he likes merging both of that stuff. I think like a lot of people um, work themselves with a fever over it. Like, you know, you got to be one way, you got to be the other. I, I'm all for just what delivers the best product for me and my style. Like, that's all I want to do. I want to make the best art I can. So if I can make the best art through a combination or, you know, if, if I find out that I make better art through going digital, then I'm going to go digital because, you know, whatever makes the best product at the end is what I want to you know, initially get to. So what about conventions, though? Because you're in New York, obviously you have, uh, or you're outside of New York, one of the two. Um, you, you got New York Comic Con coming up in, in October, I believe. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you got you probably have uh, easy access to go to like a Philly Con or Baltimore, or whatever, if you if you choose. Yep. Um, you know, what, what's what's the plan for Scam? What's the convention circuit looking like for you? Uh, we got, coming up in a, a few months, we have Boston Comic Con. Which, uh, again, for the listeners, go check out the, the guest list. It's huge. It's gigantic. Uh, that's April 20th and the 21st. Myself and Comics Tribe will be there uh, pushing our wares. 
and trying to get some new fans. And then uh, after that, I'm doing the Wild Hog Roadshow, Wild whatever. It's a local show in New Jersey that's um, based pretty much uh, guys by the guys that started it are guys that uh, have a podcast as well. And uh, do that little show in um, I think it's on like is free comic book day on the weekend. I forget specifically. I could be wrong, but yeah, normally like that. Um, that's May fifth, and then uh, after that is uh, a very exciting thing. Uh, I'm going to be going to Vegas for uh, a signing thing around Independence Day. I don't want to ruin too much of it because I know a store is that's out there. Maximum Comics. You could follow them on Twitter. They are they're they're planning something really cool. So uh, not exactly a convention, but something that if you're in the area, you will want to go. And if you come to Vegas and you see me, we will go have a drink. This is to anyone. And we will discuss anything you want, uh, and we will gamble, which is the best thing about Las Vegas. Never been there, so I have to go. I've been there 13 times. I love me some Vegas, but I can't stay for longer than like four or five days. <laughs> you never go to the ATM. That is my plan. I have never once gone to the ATM. If I lose my money gambling, so be it. I walk away. But trust me, you could fill 10 more shows with stories I have from Las Vegas. <laughs> But uh, And then I'm going to be at Baltimore and uh, the Baltimore Comic Con, which uh, I'm very excited for. And then uh, finishing the year up, I'll be uh, in yeah in New York like uh, towards the end of the year. Nice, nice. Yeah, I've heard good things about the New York Comic Con. Uh, um, just the craziness of it, from what I hear. If, if, you, if you look at – if you go to any Read Pop um, promotion, New York Comic Con, C2E2, right. San Diego, et cetera um, – you know, it's it's a blast, and uh, and I've always loved Chicago. That's where I'm going. Actually, the same, well, the week before you're going to Boston Comic Con, I'll be in, I'll be at C2E2 in Chicago. So uh, that'll be a blast, and um, I'm looking forward to that too. Yeah, that's awesome. I really wanted to get to C2E2 this year. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But I've heard great things about C2E2. Heard it's yeah, great, well, great con. It, it is. Watch all the video interviews that I have, and you you'll get a good taste of, of what they have to offer. So. I actually think our publisher is going to be uh, not our publisher. Sorry, our printer is going to be there. I see oh, nice. printing, and I think he's going to be selling uh, Comics Tribe books. So. Okay, then I'll have to interview him. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. The... It's, his name's Noel, and uh, guy's amazing. Guy's amazing. Great guy. Okay. Good. Good. Awesome. Um, is there anything else that I haven't touched upon here that that you'd like to share with the the readers of Scam or or your your commissioners or or anything like that? Um, my commissioners, keep your filthy, uh, stupid Tim Tebow requests to yourself. May I suggest Tebowing, possibly a knife into your skull? I do not want to draw that. I will not draw that. Even if Tim Tebow himself asks, you give me Tebow, I will not draw that. <laughs> um, but no, man, I've covered everything. I just pretty much, you know, my, my statement is I love comics. I love making comics. And uh, I appreciate every single person that's picked up scam that's that's digitally in print whatever uh i just i appreciate the hell out of it because the response from that first issue has given me you know a strong belief that this is this is where i could go with my career now and uh that's just you know like literally a dream come true so it's very much appreciated uh every retailer that you know didn't know me from a hole in the wall that decided to you know give me space on their shelf with my book uh you know thank you like i appreciate every bit of it and uh I, I hope um, the next issue just continues to build and build and build. And I'm not, you know, just saying this because it's my book. Number two is going to be something that I really, really believe will have a lot of people talking. Like, wow, I've never heard of that before. I've never, you know, I never, that's, why didn't anyone think of that before? That's, you know, or they're going to be like, that's the dumbest piece of shit I've ever seen. <laughs> it's going to be one of the two. We'll see. I'm sure we'll have both. I'm sure we'll have both. As long as it's not a Mass Effect 3 ending, you'll be all set. Yeah, people are pissed about that, huh? Nah, I don't know. I, uh, well, I'll talk to you after the fact. All right, fair enough. Yeah, my, fa <laughs> my father-in-law showed up to the house like all in a tizzy the other day, and I'm like, what's going on? He's like, Mass Effect 3, stupid. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ah. <laughs> you have a great father. <laughs> yeah, he's always oh, amazing. My father-in-law is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll leave it at that with the grumbling of a father-in-law about <laughs> Mass Effect Three, <laughs> and uh, comics. I don't know what does. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but but take it. Take a look at Scam. Take a look at Comics Tribe. Uh, where can we? Uh, we can find it at is it Comics Tribe with an X dot com. Yep, C O M I X T R I B E dot com. 
Matt on Twitter, right. Comics Tribe. Uh, you know, you can follow myself on Twitter, and uh, my website is uh, JoeMolveArt.com. And uh, then there's, you know, I'm on Twitter at Joe Mulve, J O E M U L V, because the real Joe Mulvey, which I evidently am not, wouldn't give up his Twitter handle because he's a fisherman and he wanted to show pictures of his fish. And I, yeah, that's where we end the show, guys. I'm talking about a guy who has my name, who likes to fish, and father in laws who hate Mass Effect 3. Take that out of the podcast. You try to play with that dynamite, you can't handle this. <laughs>